Here the tail is going to be uh, have a lot of sinew okay. and um, muscle fiber. You know which I mean? is tougher, right? Which is tougher, okay. exactly. So all of the flesh up near the back and the belly is going to be, um, have more flavor okay. and not quite as tough. Good. Just like any other, um, any other protein, any other animal, usually the back or the belly is the best part to eat. Okay. Um, again, grabbing this off the handle, we're going to come right under here, just like that, and take this off. And then wow. we flip it over. Like Lovely. Get rid of that skin. And now you see this part on the fish right here? You've got a little bit of the sheen on here uh -huh. as well. Um, there's actually three layers between the flesh and the skin. And you can see there's a red layer, uh -huh. a gray layer, and a white layer. That's all the fat layers that's insulating the fish from the cold water. Wow. That's where all the flavor is. So you're going to keep that intact. Okay, keep that on there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trim that off. Trim that off. Then after that, the last step is you're just going to slice it into small pieces for the ceviche. And what you want to do when you slice any kind of fish is you want to come perpendicular to the lines on the flesh. Can you see these lines in here that run this way? There are. Let's make sure we can get the... Right. So there's... Are you talking about these, these lines here? Because it's mm -hmm. kind of in a triangle. Right. And then you can also see it on this reverse side here where they come down straight to the middle. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we've got these lines here. So... So you're going to come perpendicular to it, which is going to be this direction right here. And you can see how it's perpendicular on that. Yep. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to slice this into small pieces. Lovely. Ugh, so pretty. Gosh. It's a little bit of color and it actually makes it look really nice. Exactly. And that's where all the flavor is, is in that. In Japanese, that's called chiai which is the, uh, actually from the bloodline, because there's blood flowing around the outside of the uh -huh. fish. And that's what we're going to um, use for the flavor and also for this um, ceviche as well. Wonderful. I'm going to put that to the side. It's gorgeous. The next step is to mix this fish with all the rest of the ingredients. Great. Um, we need a bowl or something? Yes. The key to this is, as I said in the beginning, one of the quintessential things is going to be temperature. You want to keep the temperatures exactly where you want. In this dish, we want everything to be very cold. Okay. So anytime you're doing any kind of cold salad or ceviche or with greens or anything like this, always good to keep a stainless bowl and keep it in the refrigerator. That way, when you're ready to yeah. start prepping, you can pull it out of the refrigerator and as you cut the things, they'll stay colder in this bowl. And I'll also show you once you put them all in here, you're going to go back into the fridge. So if you're making a whole dinner, right. you can leave it all in the stainless bowl and then right at the end, because you're always going to serve some type of salad usually first, mm -hmm. you can pull that out of the refrigerator and dress it and then mix it and play it from there. Perfect. Yeah. That and that's thing. great. So this is kind of a make ahead thing that you could, I guess you would want to make ahead anyway, because you probably want it to marinate a little exactly, bit. So, exactly. Okay. So this is a make ahead So we're going to put the fish dish. into the bowl. Great. Okay. First thing. This is called Sambaizu, which is a... Um, mix it's a japanese rice wine vinegar okay i've heard with, of that with, sure. with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of soy very nice real clean so do you buy that already made or do you make it yourself uh, we mix it ourselves at the okay. restaurant so we'll put some of that in here vinegar soy and a little bit of sugar we'll let me get a little smell that of that on the side oh yeah I can real smell clean real fresh very again. nice yep and mm. the sugar will sweeten it up just slightly this is so healthy very very healthy yes what next? So we'll give us a little bit more room. We'll set that fish to the side. Okay. And then we're going to go through and um, prepare some of the uh, vegetables for this. Start with some of the tomatoes. Grab a handful of these. These are, again, yellow teardrop tomatoes. Teardrop tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You can tell just by the shape mm -hmm. why they have their name. <laughs> they hang straight down just like that. And again, you could prepare this for two people, four people, six people. Just depends on the size of the bowl and the amount of ingredients you want to prepare and, mm -hmm. and cut. And is there a reason we're using, other than the shape and the beautiful color of the teardrop tomatoes, is there, I mean, if you just had red tomatoes on, cherry tomatoes on hand or something, could you use that? I'm always just trying to... Oh, you to, could use any cause... kind of tomatoes, okay. definitely so. Okay. I'm definitely just trying so. to, for our, for our viewers and myself, sometimes in a pinch, you know, I just want to know if what's essential and what's not, so... These are called currants. Oh, okay. They're like uh, miniature yellow tomatoes. Okay. We're going to throw those in whole as well. Wow. Stems on and everything. Stems on and everything. Because that's the way we do it. <laughs> it looks, it looks, it makes it look fresh. 
We've also got some uh, vine on yellow Dutch heirloom tomatoes. Dutch, okay. Yes, from I've Holland. Seen from Holland, mm -hmm. wow. Do you fly those in? Um, no, I bought these at the market today. Wow. Because I've, I've recently made a ceviche, yellow tomato ceviche with uh, yellow tomatoes from Mexico. Oh, those are delicious so as well. they are good. We're going to add those in as well. And apparently you can get yellow tomatoes year-round. Is that true? It's true. Okay. These days you can get pretty much any ingredient year-round. <laughs> just that's the way it works these days. So we're going to slide this over, switch sides. So they're just, I mean, large chunks. Hmm? Okay, great. Kind of bite size. Yeah, that kind of yeah. Thing. That you're all about bite size, right? Oh yeah. Well, at, at my restaurant, everyone uses chopsticks, so we call it chopstick friendly. Like they have to oh. be able to. There's no knives. Like we wouldn't give them this knife; it'd be kind of dangerous. So <laughs> we cut everything up for them. Yeah. And actually, I was actually watching a show last night on on fine living, and uh -huh. um, I think the the gentleman was making bison, like a bison steak, like a giant bison steak, uh -huh. and, and um, it was it was strange to me that he just served it whole like that because. You're uh, so used to. At my restaurant, yeah. Well, we we pre-cut everything. I love that. You know, I so love it's much that. easier. Yeah. It's actually much more luxurious as well. This is called a pluot again. Uh huh. It's a hybrid fruit created by man. Um, really? Of apricot Ooh. and plum. Can it's I have a little a taste of that? Brilliant color. Sure thing. There you go. Just out of curiosity. Mmm. Very mm. refreshing. Oh, wow. I love that. And I always say that. Uh, it's a very definitive marriage between the plum and the apricot got together. <laughs> they had a good night. They're very and happy. <laughs> and they had a little baby called the Pluot. <laughs> it's like so a we, rainbow too. So we add some of this again. So we're just adding different tastes and textures and the cold temperature. Right. Um, next thing, these are called loquats. Okay. Similar to a kumquat. Which is? Which is a tiny little citrus fruit. Okay. Grows on a tree. Um, these two, the loquats and the kumquat, are the only citrus that the part you want to eat is the uh, the peel, uh -huh. and not the center part of the fish. Up fish, I, <laughs> citrus. I never would have guessed. So with this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some small slices of it with the seeds, because you can eat the seeds as well in this. Really? I'll just add that to that. These are very tart, so I'm just going to use a little bit. Uh huh. 